Today is Saturday, August the 17th, and this is the video that covers Friday, August the 16th, 2019, <clears throat> Ichimoku style. So I tweeted out at some point in the day, because I was taking my daughter up to her university for her freshman um, dorm um, experience, and um, now I, all my kids are out of the house, so that's going to be a shock. Uh, I wasn't paying too much attention, um, but I did tweet, oh my gosh, great, um, the market's hit its bottom, it's only upside from here on in, because the Dow was up a couple of hundred points at that time, and then I caveated it by saying, just kidding, there's much more volatility ahead. There is nothing that happened this week that makes Friday any different from Tuesday. Maybe the absence of tweets from the White House, but nothing got any better for the farmers. Nothing got any better for the taxpayers or the consumer because the tariffs are still in place. So the volume in all three exchanges was right on the 20 day moving average volume. That shows interest in buying and selling. How much of that was uh, institutions? Because we are just at the 20 day moving average, probably not a lot. Um, what percentage? I don't know. But it really takes the institutions to drive us above the 20 day moving average. So we saw the Dow move up all day long. Same with the NASDAQ, big pop at the open, and that was Apple, and we saw the S&P also move up. We saw the advancers swamp decliners by about 80% to 20%, which is going to take our market indicator, which was down here at the um, oversold level, a little bit higher, so it's going to create this kind of churn that we saw here back in uh, June, this kind of churn that we saw in September. Um, we're going to see this, and we're going to see this past Labor Day, possibly into October. That's my, that's my thinking. By the way, when you're on the McClellan site, look at some of his other charts. It's always interesting stuff. Um, he's a lot like, um, well, he just does a lot of chart stuff, and you find some neat stuff. He's like Sentiment Trader. So now let's go look at the charts. Let's look at the... Sorry, this was my video that I just finished um, where I explained the Walmart call spread. So let's go into the S&P. The S&P finished at 28.88. There's no Ichimoku in here because, again, I'm showing you this trend line, which was this left shoulder, neck, right shoulder. It came into play here, came into play here. And it was used as a place to launch once, twice, three times. But, like those other times, it doesn't mean it can't come back down. And I strongly suspect it's going to come down and use the 200 SMA and this neckline, the coincidence of both, and the 68.1. They're all in this range together. It's just too much going on here for it not to want to be pulled back. So let's take our cloud and look at the cloud. We finished under the 8 EMA. We finished in the cloud and we said back here that we were going to see churn in the cloud. And that churn was going to expand as the cloud did, meaning we'll have more higher highs, but we'll return back to some lows. And although we've seen candles moving outside of the cloud, we are indeed behaving like an airplane flying in the clouds where it senses where the bottom and the top are, but it's only able to move up and down in the cloud. And it gets its support at the bottom of the cloud, but it can't seem to break through the top of the clouds. <coughs> so that's my call. Um, I believe we are going to churn and we're going to have good days and we're going to have bad days, and we may have more minus 80 days in the S&P, and we have, may have more plus 40 and 50 days. Um, but the net effect is we're not going anywhere for a while because we have too many issues 
in the country and in the economy in the U.S. and globally <coughs> that have to be fixed. Apple at 206.45. Um, Tim Cook had uh, dinner with um, the man from the White House and finished above the 68.1. I'm sure that had nothing to do with it. I think the dinner was Friday. I'm not sure. I really don't care. I just hope that Tim Cook was able to talk to uh, the president about things that are important to him, such as gay rights, such as foreign aid, such as tariffs, and such as um, equality for people. Um, Apple is going up, and Trump moving the tariffs out to help Christmas helps Apple. So maybe Tim Cook picked up the tab for dinner. I'm sure it was at a Trump hotel somewhere. Caterpillar. Um, still just bouncing under the 8 EMA. This uh, gap down here that we've talked about for weeks now still exists. I do expect on a bad day, Caterpillar is going to come down and find support just at under 112. GDX um, down. I did add a couple of hundred shares in here, remember, on Thursday. We're still within this range. Um, GDX gold is just a good thing to have in your portfolio because when there are bad days, they are going to perform better than the stocks. So I'm not adding. Um, I'm holding. But as we move up, I am going to be adding. I'm going to draw Fibonacci on this um, on Monday and take a look at where my next levels are. Whirlpool, um, pretty nice bounce. And these candles, these different colored candles, show you inside and outside days. So when it's white like this, it's um, an outside day. So it's white, meaning it had, it didn't actually, it didn't, well, it went just as low as the day before but it did go higher than the day before. So it's an outside candle day. Just some different way of looking at uh, stock movement. But we ended up within the cloud over the 200 SMA. Whirlpool is a nice stock to own. I like the fact that it moved slowly. I did get out of my 130 short calls on Thursday, tweeted it, talked about it in the video. It was fantastic. If I had held on to them until uh, Friday, on their expiration just to pick up another six hundred dollars because that's what I gave up when I walked away from them I would have lost everything I would have lost they would have they would have taken my stock away from me um, and I wouldn't have got to roll it so I did roll it on Thursday and now I'm in at 289 so my break-even point is 13289 and I would like nothing better than for Whirlpool to do what it's been doing which is just grinding up, grinding down, grinding up, grinding down, grinding up. That's fine with me. Um, gee, do we see a, a pattern in here? The video is pretty much over for today, but I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do an auto Gartley and let's see if there's a Gartley pattern in this hourly chart somewhere. There is not. Is there one in here? There is not. Okay, so end of video. Have a rest of good rest of the weekend. What to expect next week? More of the same. Let's go back to the S&P. Let's get rid of the Ichimoku. And let's get rid of all of our drawings for a second. Let's just not look at them. And I believe this is what we're going to see again. More of this big down days, big up days, big down days, um, reasonable up days. This is just nonsense in here. The 200 SMA, as long as this EMA, as long as this holds, we're good, but we will go down to the 200 S SMA, simple moving average. Once we break that, holy hell. Have a good weekend.